Life's end is but a new dawning. Therefore, as we commence our ghost living tale, I feel obliged to tell you Scrooge was dead to begin. Yes, in our tale, it was Scrooge who had reached his journey's end. Now, this must be distinctly understood, for only then will we see the wonder of the story I am to relate. Most truly, most truly, even as I speak, Scrooge's nephew, Fred, is at the funeral, delivering the eulogy to the bereaved. And since in this production, uh, Fred is going to be played by Robin Williams, well, we wouldn't want to miss that performance. Good morning, Baldus. Who is it? Oh, this is good. Oh, Nano, Nano. Oh, Nano, Nano to you too. Yes. Oh, yes. Good morning. It's a very good morning for morning. And this good morning, where morning, a very good friend. Yes, good old Ebenezer Scrooge. He was as good a friend, as good a man, oh, and as good an uncle as this good old city ever knew. Just think, in the best Scrooge tradition, you got all those goods and no charge. <laughs> oh, Scrooge, he loved my jokes. <laughs> Why do I wish you were here right now? <laughs> You see, Scrooge, Scrooge, he wasn't a Scrooge. So please don't say, please don't say you're a Scrooge when the only thing you share is a contagious disease. <laughs> oh, I knew this robber once, a smashing rat robber. You know, he got caught, though. He was such a Scrooge, he went back to the brick. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Are you a Scrooge? Are you a Scrooge? I think you are, you know, sitting there is the exit. <laughs> That's just in case there's a collection. <laughs> yes, you Scrooge, I bet you think Tiny Tim was faking it. <laughs> oh, gone too far there. <laughs> but you know, Scrooge, he, he wasn't the lowercase now. He was my Uncle Evan, or he knew more about giving and living than any man alive. Well said, well said, well said. Up to a point. By the end of his life, Scrooge was not a squeezing, wrenching, grasping, clutching, covetous old sinner, nor was he at the beginning. Who is? But by the middle of his life, Scrooge had become as hard and as sharp as men. And of course, this is a Scrooge we all know, especially on film. Ask the film expert, Jonathan Ross. <laughs> nice old film, nice old film, nice old film. As a kid, as a kid, oh, at the movies, oh, at the movies, I hate Scrooge. <laughs> I find it Scrooge more than anyone else because I couldn't even pronounce his name properly. <laughs> but my favourite Scrooge, my favourite Scrooge has to be Muppet Christmas Carol. <laughs> Muppet Christmas Carol. Who can forget Michael Caine giving Kermit the Frog a near fall for the way he opens the office safe? I told you, Bob Patchett, just to blow the bloody doors off. <laughs> Christmas. 
very present, they don't want. Through people you don't like, with money you haven't got. <laughs> <laughs> you offer me no Merry Christmas, sir. Not on my account. For my account, come January, will not be withdrawn. <laughs> <laughs> the brokers made their excuses and left. The two gentlemen collecting for charity stepped into their place.
painting he'd done of the Nativity. I looked at it. There was Joseph and the shepherds. But over in the corner was this large, somewhat circular woman. I said, Timmy, I said, who's that? Oh, he said, that is the round young virgin. <laughs> gossiping with you all day. There's the pudding to pay. And if truth be known, I have my doubts as to the quantity of flour. Scrooge continued his weary walk across the sea, failing to see the abundance of provisions <coughs> that this play had, or even the street train. Time in my life, I can say 
I money in the kitty. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> he always robbed me these knees and pants of mine are as thin as an actor's bullet. I reckon I can tell whether this is heads or tails just by sitting. Ooh, the Queen's nose. <laughs> and heads it is, heads it is. And if my head and all this Scrooge catches him in his door, Scrooge approaches his counting house with a face that warns all fellow travellers to the grave to keep their distance. The one who takes no heed is a carol singer, a small, mouse-like boy with big black ears, <laughs> called Mickey.
solitary as an oyster. Scrooge sat in his cell of an office, staring meanly at the clock on the wall until the hour arrived for the shutting up of the counting house. You'll, uh, you'll be wanting the whole day off tomorrow, I suppose. It, 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 it can't convenient, sir. No, no, it is not convenient. And it's not fair. If I were to stop you half a crown for it, you'd think yourself ill used. Oh, but you don't consider me ill used, paying a, a day's wages for no work. It's only once a year, sir. <laughs> a poor excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. Oh, very well, very well. But be here all the earlier the next morning. With those words, Bob was out the door, and in no time at all, he was whizzing down a slide of ice made by boys on the road. Oh, twenty times he made that trip in honour of its being Christmas Eve, before pelting home to Camden Town to enjoy two, three, even four of his wife's glorious things Mrs. Cratchit, so kind and generous, has sent some here today for the needy of Birmingham. <laughs> they will be distributed by someone who truly believes in caring and in sharing. Hello, darling. Little <laughs> <laughs> no, Robin. Robin red dressed up there. <laughs> can we have the house lights on, can we? <laughs> yes, it's feeding time for you hungry paupers. <laughs> Would you like a mince pie, sir? <laughs> you look as though you need one. You do. <laughs> Some mince pie for your hands up. There's a little hand, you want one? You want a little mince pie? You do? And I saw a hand right at the back of the
that not Marley's voice? Was it? Scrooge stared once more at the apparition. <coughs> but now it was a knocker again. <coughs> Help me! Help me! Scrooge double locked his door. climbed the stairs, he began to fancy that every shudder forebode an evil intent. Spirit we 
within you does not embrace life. It is condemned to walk alone in death, shackled by this heavy manacle. Your chain is now the entire length of the Aston Express <laughs> and drags along just as slow. <laughs> what is your purpose with me? You will be haunted by three spirits. Expect the first tomorrow when the clock strikes one, the second the next night again at one, and the third at the martini hour. <laughs> any time, any time. <laughs> I take them all at once, sort of a conference call. Conference call? <laughs> Mobile phones, email infecting. These lifeless modes of living are the very links which build your deathly chain. Oh, but you can. We all use them in business. Mankind should be our business. With those words, the ghost of Marley beckons through to the open window before floating out to the bleak end. The night sky was filled with mountains, all bound by heavy chains. Below sat a forlorn woman, huddled with her infant. Phantoms cried piteously, unable to help the poor wretches. Screwed, slammed shut the casement. ghostly visitation, Scrooge went to bed, where he thought and thought and thought. It was three in the morning before he finally fell asleep. in the gunnicle that is the Harry Potter. <laughs> 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 
a Scottish accent that can only be described as Dick Van Dyke meets Braveheart. Come, <laughs> Sidney, we are going back in time. No, no, that is not, not possible. Oh, no, everything is possible. Such is the magic of theatre. Trust me, let that be your first lesson. <laughs> Whittacombe 
old and no, so so dedicated to her profession. Left her body to medical science. <laughs> medical science, I understand, are still contesting the will. <laughs> Before we leave your school days, let me bring to mind a more convivial Christmas Eve. Snap. Yes, 
time to play, time to play, similes, similes, I say, I say, as tall as, or as short as, and you have to fill in my gap. <laughs> now let's see if some of the people out here have worked out the rules. <laughs> Thank you. 